Hey, good morning there, YouTubers. How the heck are you? Hey, I'm proud of myself. I didn't say H-E-double-L. -L. Man, I've got to cuss myself up and down one side or another for not thinking of this sooner. Of course, it's nothing new, nothing new to anybody. I've just never got around to doing it. Ow, that hurt. Watch them things, they're sharp. Uh, I made the mistake of letting my seat leather and my rear cantle leathers dry up before I got around to, because I got interrupted, uh, to putting my cantle binding on it. Oh, don't ever let that happen, kids. Oh, man, because it's nearly impossible to push your all through that leather once it's dried up like that. I, 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 I mean, dang, it had to take a hammer to it. Or not a hammer, but a mallet to it. Da, 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 da. And with that, you take the chance of, you don't know, miss striking and then poof, you've broken your all. Now you don't have an all. Now you gotta figure out how to get that all out of there. So, yay. I finally got to thinking, I said, you know, I've seen a lot of people use a drill bit to do this kind of stuff. And I thought, man, David, let's let's try it simply because I don't want to throw my shoulder out of the freaking joint from having to push the dead gum thing so much. So the first thing I did was I made sure I had that bit the same size as the needle. I was lucky enough to have a, a, a fancy drill bit set out in the shop or out, outdoor shop out in the exposed letting it damn near go to waste but uh so you get that the same size i was able to find a collet that's smaller that it fit on my dremel but anyway you want to make sure you don't get that any further out than your last piece of leather which is the back piece of this cantle binding because if you do miss you don't want it showing up and, and of course, on the back side here, I'm doing what they call a blind stitch, which basically you take your cantle binding and split it about, I don't know, about a quarter inch deep. So you can flip that up. I'll have to move the camera to show you, but I'll do that later. Um, so that if you do miss, you've, you, you don't put a hole somewhere you don't want, to, want one to be. So the next thing we'll do is, of course, when you start, you might have to push your all through the first hole all the way through so that you make sure you get it um, in the right spot. So to begin with, first stab with your all. That lets you put your finger back there to make sure you're not going to Go through that flipped up piece of leather or miss your binding and get down there into the cantle cover. So then what I'll do is I'll leave that needle in there from the opposite direction. And then I can come in here and use that needle as a guide, kind of eyeball it here, there, everywhere, whatever, so you get the same direction and hopefully wind up in the same spot. And then, once you've done that, make sure you do this. You get it out of the way. And then you just have to hope like heck your uh, muscle memory puts you in the same position. Hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to slow it down. And I'll do about four or five holes or whatever it takes to get me close to that nail hole there. Now, I won't stop there because I don't want a round hole. I want my awl to shape that hole with that slot so that that thread lays down there better. So now you're gonna come through here and see how much easier that is?
Oops. Did I not do that one? Boy, I must not have, huh? That was where the nail was. Yeah, I didn't do it. Okay. That must have been one of my blonde moments. So see that all, it'll go through that last piece of leather. And I'm getting, I'm not gonna say nothing. So I might jinx myself, but I'm getting pretty close to where I wanna be by it, gully. Yay, that worked out pretty good. Notice how I did not have to struggle. So now, I go back to where that guy, you know, I left that needle in there to guide me. And, go back to the stitching stuff here. Another thing I like to do is I pull that backwards so that I'm not going through that thread, hopefully. Once I get it to there, now what I'm gonna do is pull this, and you'll have to watch because you, you almost wanna hold that needle there in place so that when you do pull back on that, you'll know if it's been poked through the thread inside that hole where you can't see because it will it'll pull it back and then you come back here and do your two reps in a hooey ah. and oops watch your nails down there david a lot of times i'll if I can't see the hole down here, I'll, I'll stab it like that just because what's the deal, Pickle? Get in there. What are we doing here, David? There we go. Couldn't find the hole. Of course, I'm old and got arthritis. That's why I'm having to cheat and use those uh, needle nose pliers. Pull this one. Yay, okay. So now I can do my wraps. Two reps in a hooey. I just like saying that. <laughs> and no, I never was a I never was a calf roper. I was a rodeo clown and a bullfighter back in the days. And started doing the leather whew, way back in high school actually. Uh, but did leather work, you know, the, the class in in high school. And then I went to work for a bootmaker named Eli Rios when he was affiliated with Longhorn Boot Company there in La Feria, Texas. And while I was there, I was, you know, trying to be one of them bull riders. And uh, I needed a pair of chaps, so they let me. Uh, Oh, I done goofed up, dang it. See, I can't talk and work at the same time. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, they, they let me make a pair of chaps and I got to warm for a little while and everything. Anyway, then I got into that rodeo thing. Did pretty good with it. 
but after I got retired from rodeoing, I uh, I needed a hobby because I was going to the bar all the time. So I started making rodeo chaps. Did pretty good with that for years. And in fact, made chaps for a movie called Eight Seconds. I don't know if any of y'all ever heard of that movie or not, back from the 90s, mid 90s. Uh, and that made things really, you know, go well. So, Anyway, here I am today making saddles. I hardly won't even touch a pair of chaps anymore just because there's so many people doing them now that uh, I just, I'd rather be doing these right here. But I will do some here shortly just to, just to say I did. All right, well, there's that little tip and a little history lesson for y'all. I'm going to turn you loose after I get this one stitch here done. Y'all go have you a good day and a good weekend coming up. Ow. Watch yourself. You hit yourself in the belly, David. And if you forget to wrap that two, two loops in a hooey, you can do it like that. Get out of the way, Neil. There you go. All right. Thanks again, folks, for watching, liking, and subscribing. DavidMillsSaddlery.com. Toodaloo, buggeroos. And this here's what I mean by a blind stitch. This, of course, it's way too wet, so it's not even glued yet, but I'm, I've got it folded down. And here, you know, we've got it folded up. So you can see the stitching and then how it's eventually going to be covered up. Toodaloo, buggeroos.